Welcome to Electron Online. To get the better feel for how the shear forces and the moments change along the beam, in this particular situation where we have the reaction forces at the end points of the beam and we have a single point load force of 300 newtons of the beam. This is the exact same setup as we had in the previous example, the previous video, where we actually calculated the shear and the moment along each of these points along the beam. Now let's go ahead and graphically represent the moment and the shear forces. First, starting with the shear forces, we realized that they remained at 100 newtons all the way from C to D to E to F and to G right before we got to the load force because the only force acting on these sections right here would be the reaction force at A, so we had a shear force of 100 newtons in the other direction. Remember, for the left section, a shear force in the downward direction is considered a positive shear. So they remained at 100 at 1 meters, at 2 meters, at 3 meters, and at 4 meters, the shear force remained at 100 newtons. Notice that once we get past the load force, the net force on the left section of the beam would be 300 newtons down, 100 newtons up, which would be 200 newtons downward, which gives us a shear force of 200 newtons upward. Remember that down is positive, for the shear force on the left section of the beam, which means an upward shear force gives us a negative shear force and it would then become a negative 200 for the next section of the beam. So the shear force drops to a negative 200 and stays there until we get to the end of the beam. And that's a graphical representation of the shear force on the beam. On the left side, we have a shear force that's positive, meaning in the downward direction. To the right side of the load, we have a shear force which is upward, which is a negative shear force. And so therefore, we have a negative 200 newtons per meter for that section of the beam. Looking at the moments, notice we start at a moment for zero right at the left edge of the beam. Then it increases to 100 newtons per meter, or 200 newtons per meter, 300 newtons per, me per meter, because each time it's only the reactionary force of A that causes a moment, but the moment arm gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Therefore, you have a greater and greater moment, which requires a greater and greater internal forces, creating a counter moment inside the beam, counteracting that moment caused by the reaction force, which means that at one meter, you have a 100 Newton meter moment, at two meters, 200 Newton meters, at three meters, 300 newton meters, and at 4 meters, 400 newton meters. So we have a steady increase. Oop, let me try to draw a straight line here. We have a steady increase of the moment until we hit the load. Once we get past the load, then you can see that the load begins to counterbalance that moment, and the moment begins to decrease. By the time we get to I, the moment is down to 200 newtons per meter. We get to the very end of the beam, it's down to zero. So at 5 meters, we get down to 200, and at 6 meters, back to zero. So the moment then decreases like that. So those are the two graphical representations. This one is a graphical representation of the shear force along the beam, and this is a graphical representation of the moment across the beam. The greatest moment is caused at 4 meters. That's where the load happens to, to act, and that would be where the beam would have to withstand the greatest forces, internal forces, trying to counteract the bending of the beam at that particular point. And that's how we graphically interpret the shear and the moment along the beam.